talk to me again. Okay, it's going to be a good video. I'm going to speak as loudly as possible, and I suggest you open up those listening ears. How to recognize you're being mobbed. Fast and furious, <laughs> rule number one, trust your instinct. The moment you start walking into work and your stomach feels funny, you notice people are looking at you differently. You notice that certain people that never talk to you are suddenly being really hot. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, and you also notice that certain people that always talk to you are no longer talking to you. That people that used to come to your office or say good morning are no longer doing so. I can't say it typically happens all in one shot, okay? But it happens pretty quickly. <clears throat> You'll also notice people trying to violate your boundaries. So, rule number one, besides actually rule number two, rule number one is trust your instinct. And rule number two is the moment you get that weird feeling is the time for you to start to withdraw a little bit. Don't talk so much to your coworkers. You could remain polite. A little bit aloof, perhaps. Concentrate on your job. Okay? Don't even think that anybody's your friend in there. Because if there's a mobbing happening, I'm going to guarantee you something. You don't have any friends in there. Because if you did have a couple of friends, they wouldn't even try. Okay, uh, They wouldn't try to mob you. Because typically the people that are going to be against you, like I said, levels of management. And if you have friends, they'll probably cower. Okay, Or sometimes the mobbers are your own friends or people that you kind of had a little confidence in. So do not confide in anyone. If you want to confide in someone, your spouse, friends outside of work, myself, or a number of other people that do this kind of thing and have YouTube videos, you can look at research documents. I'm going to share some really good ones with you also, um, but at another date. So that's it. Don't tell anybody at work you feel different, you feel you're being mobbed. Don't say a word. And understand that at this point, you're pretty much on your own. Do your job, concentrate on your job, and work on those boundaries. Now, if you have barbecue day, and you have, go to barbecue day. Just do it, go. Bite the bullet. Take your food, or don't, or whatever. Just kind of drift off. Uh, if you can engage in small talk with a couple of people, great. But you have to expect that some people are going to pull some punches. You're going to get that. I'm just telling you. Best thing to do is maybe prepare in advance or expect it, okay? So one thing you could do is either be prepared with some nice responses so that you don't get caught off guard. Getting caught off guard is really tough, especially when adrenaline flows and you're in fight or flight mode, okay? Um, so my suggestion, for instance, say you're at barbecue and somebody comes off with a, a ridiculous comment, uh, something meant to insult or humiliate. I've given a couple of examples. Here's another one. Hi, Missy. <laughs> Missy, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can be eating your food. Take a breath. Exhale. Wise mind. And you could just have a good hard look and say, I don't like what you just said. I don't like that. Uh, well, you're being sensitive. No, I'm not being sensitive. I don't like what you said, so... Could you just not do that? You you have to have that kind of an attitude. You gotta just close those doors, firmly shut. It's not so difficult with the women. It's a little tougher with the guys, all right? Because women will catch it. We catch it with each other. Guys, not so much. Guys can be a little thicker. Like I said, not everybody is like an evil doer. Not everybody is going to really try to get your goat. You're going to get quite a few people that will, though. All right? Uh, sometimes you will get men doing that. Men tend to come off more aggressively. Okay? Uh, not all the time. Like I said, you get the cowardly kind of guys. And again, I'm getting into that whole gender thing. But, like, say my direct manager, he was really a girl. That wasn't, like, he didn't even behave. He behaved in such a passive-aggressive way. He was more female than he was male. Okay, but then you're going to get, it's that toxic masculinity, not like a real, like to me, I'm both, I'm male and female, like I, I 
you know, I can stand up when I have to and I'll, I'll be feminine and I can be, I guess, masculine. It depends. I don't really care. And whatever. But some people carry much more of certain traits. Now, when we talk toxic masculinity, I'm not talking about a man holding a door for you. That's a lovely thing. Toxic masculinity is when a man feels emasculated in general, okay, and becomes extremely aggressive. So in my workplace, I was dealing with a bunch of old school, old guard kind of guys uh, that all of a sudden had a new boss who was very, a female who was passive aggressive. They were very angry and they felt emasculated and they were just not smart. They didn't manage, they didn't know how, it's not even their fault. They were put in a position that they should have been in in the first place, in my opinion. Okay, so here are these guys, they're really angry. They're just going to try to bite anybody's head off. And it happened to be me. And so you're going to deal with a lot of direct, overt, ugly, toxic masculinity. Like I had one, that, that guy that I was saying was vying for the same job as my cowardly manager. Like he stormed into my office one day, okay, after a little incident. He storms in and he comes really close. I'm sitting at my desk doing my work. Comes in really close and he's like, do you have a problem with me? So, you know, if, if you're going to act that way with me, well, you know what? I'm going to act that way with you. Hey, no problem with me. I did the wise mind. I did this. So we did. Right. So dude backs up and I said, if you have a problem with me, send me an email. Right? Okay. A little bravado -y. I, I totally understand. Like I said, this isn't really a how-to what I did this last time. Just for me, I, I think I I went past that point where it's like, okay, I'm going to fix this. I knew that it had gone beyond the point of fixing it, Liz. All right? And I was already in, uh, I was already in fight or flight mode. And my choice was to fight. <clears throat> and I'm proud of myself. But at the same time, look, I'm not working right. It was a choice, <laughs> right? In a way. I mean, I wouldn't have chosen to do this otherwise. I was choosing to leave the workplace prior to the mobbing having occurred, but it just happened prematurely. The timing couldn't have been, like, I can't say it couldn't have been worse, but it's not the greatest timing. So my advice to you is if somebody's going to come up, you have to have firm boundaries. You can role play it with your spouse, with your friends, if you don't have a spouse, uh, with me if you feel like it. <laughs> I have time be my pleasure. You can kind of plan in advance, right? Uh, how you're going to work this through. So bottom line, how to recognize you're being mobbed. A, your gut will tell you. B, people that were normally cold will start running hot. Okay. How are you? And oh, how are you doing? People that normally don't say hello to you, uh, don't pay any mind to you, sometimes ignore you when you say hello, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so, and the other thing is, do not confide in anybody, because chances are you don't have one real friend at that workplace, because you wouldn't be in this situation if you did, okay? And, again, another rule is really set up those boundaries nice and firm. It's very important to do that. And that's it for now. Please, any questions, comments, queries, concerns, do not hesitate to write me, okay? It's foxyd at gmail.com and I wish you a wonderful rest of the day.